our simulator consists of two main parts. The first part, the IsoMaker, is where you define all aspects of an instruction set. The output of the IsoMaker is an Isa definition file, which is used by the second part, the programmable simulator. The simulator will extract information about the ISA from the applied ISA definition file and adjust its appearance and functionality accordingly. Now you can start writing instructions and monitor their execution. This is the ISA maker. You may first load an ISA from an existing ISA definition file. The ISA maker will extract information about the ISA and display it. You can then edit any part of the ISA and save the results back to a file. This is where most of the structural aspects of the ISA are defined. Most importantly, what registers are there and their sizes. You can have any number of registers and each register can be of any length. A register can have multiple names as in the MIPS instruction set or parts of it as in the x86 or even a single bit such as the carry in the flag register. We call these register aliases and can be defined via the aliases dialog. The most challenging part about defining an ISA is how to define instructions. This is done by adding or editing instruction templates via the instruction editor dialog. The instruction template is first represented by a string with special symbols indicating where operands should be and their type. The functionality of this template is then defined by a series of primitive operations. These are a small set of operations that the simulator can execute and in combination can represent very complex instructions. When representing the instruction as a series of operations, you will most likely need temporary registers to hold these values. You can define as much of these as you need. Once finished, you can save the ISA to a file or apply it, and the simulator will start functioning according to the currently displayed ISA. When an ISA has been applied, the simulator is now ready. The simulator is straightforward. You can write programs in the program area or open a text file. The contents of the memory and registers are displayed and can be changed or cleared dynamically during execution. To allow interaction with the simulation, there are two pseudo registers, the input and output. An attempt to read from the input register or write to the output register will display the corresponding dialog. Even if it simulates any instruction set, the simulator still supports dynamic syntax coloring. The colors and styles can be edited via options. From there, you can also specify the default ISA file to be applied upon startup. We tested our program by constructing famous existing ISAs belonging to different classes and ran a number of programs on each one. We even invented some strange ISAs to test the capabilities of our simulator.